The heads of the big four banks are set to be grilled by federal politicians over the next two days. One of the MPs asking questions will be committee chair and Labor member Daniel Molino, who joins us now from Parliament House. Good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Thanks for having me on, Bridget. Just explain this process to us and why is it important to have this scrutiny and accountability over across the big banks? Well, for a number of years now, the House Economics Committee has held uh, annual public hearings into the big four bank CEOs. Uh, we have the opportunity to ask questions of each CEO for three hours. It's a really important accountability mechanism for the national parliament, uh, given the role that banks play in our economy. Uh, so clearly we're in the middle of a really important part of the monetary policy cycle and banks play a key role in that. But banks are also critical in that they have visibility of what's going on in the economy in real time. So it's really important to have their input in a very public forum. What what will be some of the key issues you'll be probing today? Well, I think there'll be a whole set of questions around scams. Banks play a critical role in uh, working with government and other stakeholders in trying to put downward pressure on the amount of scams in the economy. And there has been some success to date. Uh, last year, there was a reduction of 13% in scams across the economy, but clearly it's still too high. So we want to talk to the banks about what they're investing to make sure that we make uh, further gains, but also to investigate uh, other related issues such as compensation for people uh, who are the subject or the, the victim of scams um, and the way in which banks are working with other players in the sector such as the digital platforms, uh, social media platforms and uh, telecommunications. There are going to be lots of questions around the state of the economy, uh, around people's spending patterns, uh, around mortgages in distress, loans in arrears um, and there'll also be a lot of questions around the payment system. Well, that's an interesting point about mortgages and people in mortgage stress and distress right now, which is just a growing amount of Australians, unfortunately. Uh, is that something you're keen to hear from the banks about what sort of assistance they're offering people who are just falling between the cracks? Yeah, definitely. So we're interested in both what's happening in terms of the number of people uh, that are in distress and Look, the last time we talked to the banks about this, and we've been also following this through uh, regulators, through ASIC and APRA and the RBA itself, look, our understanding is that the numbers um, are increasing, but somewhat gradually still. And this is a reflection of the fact that uh, labour markets remain uh, quite resilient. Uh, but clearly we want to get a, a, the most up-to-date uh, insight into uh, what the trends are there. But as you allude to, we're also interested in ways in which banks are helping people through whatever difficulty they're in? Are they giving people uh, flexibility uh, to deal with what hopefully might be short-term difficulties uh, in banking payments on their mortgages? Will you have some pointed questions to ANZ over allegations of inappropriate trading and cultural issues within that bank? Yeah, look, as you point to, there's a really serious possible set of breaches there. Uh, one set of breaches uh, re relate to the possibility of market manipulation in bond markets, uh, and, and we'll certainly be uh, investigating that. The, there have been some uh, allegations made by ASIC, which they're looking further into, and ANZ are looking uh, further into. And this is really important because this is where governments raise their money. So if there is manipulation of the rate at which government is borrowing, that ultimately costs taxpayers, that ultimately costs all the people watching this program. Uh, but there are also allegations that there might have been uh, some instances of overstating uh, the extent to which ANZ had met certain benchmarks or uh, how many bonds they'd actually sold. So this is a really important ongoing issue. Uh, we do understand that there are investigations underway, but it's really important that we use this forum as a way of exploring that set of issues.